Hey, the CX-500 is going back together beginning right now with the Stator. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So every vintage motorcycle mechanic uh, knows this feeling you get when you're going through the OEM parts finder and you come across some major component that you know you've tested on the bike you're working on and it's bad and you find that that part is discontinued and you get the sinking feeling and you go, oh no, what am I going to do? Um, of course, there's always used parts, but that's a roll of the dice with used parts. Yes, you can test them to work, but in a, this particular situation where you're going deep into the bike, where the engine is coming out of the frame, and then you're breaking the engine case apart to get at, in this case, the stator, um, man, it is fun to find a new replacement uh, that's built well and coming from some people that you can count on. Uh, I'm happy to talk about my experience with the Stator in this Honda CX-500. So as I previously mentioned just now, we have tested the Stator in this Honda CX-500 and uh, that's in a previous video. This Stator is kaput. And I got a brand new stator here that looks fantastic it's wound really well I mean you know I kind of know what I'm looking for when it comes to a wind job on uh, you know the magnet wire has to be wound a certain way and I can tell that this is being done by a machine and not by hand uh, which is a good thing because that uniformity really matters and then um, it seems to be a good quality thick gauge magnet wire so I found this stator and let me talk about where I got it. I came across this company, RM Stator out of Canada, who sent me this fantastic stator which is a perfect replacement for the one in the CX-500. He sent me this really good quality uh, insulating uh, wrap uh, that is also abrasion proof and uh, it's a nice kit. I don't really see how had the OEM been available I don't see how they would have sent me anything better and it's not available from Honda so you know you don't have a lot of choices I'm happy to say we've got a good choice and a good solution with RM Stator so Happy to have found them. Um, enough talk about where I got it. Let's get it in. So getting the old stator out is easy enough. Three bolts. Ten millimeter. Pretty tight. Should have some Loctite on them. So flipping the back case over, you've got this one wiring harness coming out of the back top and your stator wires, which are these three, there's the three, all yellow, um, travel amongst other wires for the CDI, which there's a pickup inside of this case. So we do need to take this whole harness apart and separate the um, wires for the stator from the rest of them. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better how this man took this and built this, how these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship, 
and how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. I like to use an X-Acto knife for this. Uh, you know, you could use a box cutter too, but just be careful of where you're cutting. Um, because a lot of these wires inside, you don't want to break through the insulation on those, only the outer wrap. And this is going to be a long, boring process that I will spare you from until it's done. Okay, so I got that all unwrapped, and before I take this cover off of that CDI pickup, um, I just want to revisit the difference between a good stator and a bad stator even though I've already done a video on how to test your stator um, let's test this one one more time quickly and let's test the new one from RM stator so with this old one I was okay on having matching continuity between the three phases there's one there's two, sorry, and here's three. But when I go to ground, I should not get continuity from one of these, and I am getting continuity when I ground. So this thing is grounded out. Let me try another one. That one also. And the final, grounded out on all three phases. Not good. Testing the new stator in the same way. I'm going to go through this quickly because it's kind of boring. Uh, but this, same continuity between phases, same continuity, and switch. Here and here. That's great. So, you know, fine. But when I go to ground, I get nothing on the new one. And that is as it should be. Excellent. No continuity on ground. So I'll just remove this back cover. And we got the last one out. I have to pry on that a little. save that gasket possibly and then one more thing I want to do before I start pulling wires through I need to get these um, connections taken apart so that the wires will fit through the uh, small hole on the engine case and RM stator is nice enough to include brand new connector caps and the spade terminals um, so that's fantastic but before I do, I'm just going to write down all of this information. You know, I know the yellows go into here, which is going to be all blacks on the new stator. But uh, all this color coding, I'm going to want to know all of this. So I'll write it down before I take it apart. So, keeping track of this is as simple as a little diagram. Orange, green, orange, red, orange, yellow, light blue, light blue, red, light blue, yellow. You know, draw the little tab. Whoop. Draw the little tab on your drawing, and you know, I got it. So now I can take that apart and not think twice about it. So I've just started taking those connectors apart. Uh, I'll show you how I do this. There's a little tab here that you need to press something sharp on to release it and pull it out of the plastic connector shroud going to be pretty hard to see but I'm using this little pick and I go right down in there and then 
put some pressure against it while I pull that wire out and it just comes out. But be careful where your thumb is when you're yanking the blade out because those little terminals are pretty sharp. Anyways, I gotta go tend to this now. And after a bit of work you get them all out of those connectors. The other thing I've done is removed the um, bolts off of these pulsar pickups here for the CDI. And now I'm going to disconnect this pickup. Just two wires here. Be kind of easy with those. The wire gets real stiff over time. And then I can just work this grommet, which this grommet has seen better days. New grommet. I would say the worst part of this job is the adhesive after 40 years from the electrical tape. I just, I've gone through so many gloves and washed my hands so many times because of the gooey adhesive. Okay, so upon further investigation, this D-shaped grommet, which obviously has seen better days, is something Honda never did sell as a separate part number. They just included it with the wiring, with the whole stator assembly, um, which you can't buy anymore. And so I've been looking and looking for this thing. Oop, there and uh, I can't find it. Um, so I may either reuse this one or come up with uh, some other alternative, but to be continued on this thing. And so one more thing I want to note before I take the old stator out is this power coil for the CDI separate than the other coils. There's 14 of these that power you know, these are what charge your battery and, and power your electrical system. And then this coil and this coil power the CDI on certain CX500s. Not all of your CX500s and GL500s will look like this. Um, this one does. So this is the reason why this bike can run uh, indefinitely with a dead battery. Um, anyway, so this is the orientation. You want this main power coil to be diametrically opposed to this right hand uh, pickup. Right side, I should say. So the last step before taking it out, I'm taking a screwdriver and just carefully pushing this second rub rubber grommet down in here. That guy out of the rear case itself. then all my wires and components are loose. Okay, so with this pulsar, come out of there. Not sure what this is hung up on. They just have a little bit of a dowel to them. So now all of my electrical components are loose. Careful with these things. Most of this is not something you can buy. And just pull it all out as a unit. I'll try to bring these through not all at once but individually because they're going to get hung up. go. So we're done with this for a second. And what we have left is this. So all of the wires coming out of the stator, which there are six of them, can just be slid through this grommet. But, when I get to the end, I am going to have to cut these spade terminals off, because otherwise I'm going to be 
really butchering this grommet and I want to keep that in good condition. I'm getting tangled up here toward the end. Okay, so let's see who we're going to cut before we go through. Obviously, three yellow stator wires. One, two, three. And then this blue and white, which was, this is for the CDI. I'm just going to cut those here, I guess. Oh, that's a power for uh, one of these coils. You can't see which one it is with the way this is all discolored and wrapped in uh, epoxy. And then the green. And that is a free stator. Bad one, but it's out of here. And so now I have only these pickups and the wires that come through the grommet for that and I have a new stator which we can start wiring through the grommet. Six wires came out, six wires are going back in. How convenient! So it really doesn't matter all that much you know how they're routed through here other than the three main electrical power which were yellow on the original stator we're on you know the top here so I guess I'm just gonna try to mimic that but other than that these other three who cares what order they go through and uh, we'll just snake them through one at a time I'm just trying to make some sense of this Now I don't know if this distance from grommet to here is what I'm going to want. I may end up cutting some of this away, but we'll find out later when we start putting it back in the bike. And then my three power wires. fit nice and snug, which is good, they're just kind of hard to push through there. There we go. Try not to stress them too much. It is stranded wire, so um, you know it can handle flexing, as opposed to a solid wire, which uh, is going to have metal fatigue from bending over time. So RM Stator made a very nice choice in what kind of wire they used. And let me see if I can just grab those six now. Snug this up. Missed one. Okay, that's all put together. So the other thing I wanna do before I put this together now is I wanna clean this up and get all this uh, muck out of the bottom of the inside of this case. So in preparation for putting the stator back into the engine and this engine case, I've been cleaning it up and have, you know, really, and I kind of knew this going in, that the paint was not in great shape on the top of this case. I therefore am going to paint this because this is not only uh, a repair of the electrical system but I'm also doing uh, a bit of a restoration while I'm in here and so I want to get this looking good and that's going to take some time 
So that being said, I want this to be a stator repair video and don't want it to go off into painting and restoration and that type of thing. And so I'm kind of forced right now to pause this stator repair and break this up into a couple different parts. Um, I'm going to clean up this case and paint it, but this will be the end of part one of the stator repair and replacement on the CX-500. And if you're doing this job yourself on your own Honda CX-500 and you need a new stator, check out RM Stator at rmstator.com. They have your parts. So with all that said, if you like what I'm doing, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to become an urban monk and check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton, available on my website, urbanmonktv.com. And you can buy this book where I tell a really interesting story about how I got into motorcycling and the uh, inspiration behind my cafe racer build that you can find on this channel and a bunch of other fun things that uh, I go on and on about in the book. That doesn't make it sound very interesting, does it? Believe me, it's a better read than you think. Hey, thanks a lot for watching.